Welcome back to Overlord. This is Anime Review Part 4. This time I'm reviewing the second season of the series, which adapts books 4 through 6 of the light novel series, which here's what these episodes were adapted into. Book 4 was adapted into episodes 14 and 18, and also manga chapter 15 and 27. Book 5 was adapted into books nine, uh, episodes 19 and 22, and manga chapters... 27 to 39, Volume 6, which was done for the last four episodes, 23 to 26, and of course the the manga is currently adapting Book 6 right now. Um, as far as the most recent chapter, they end the, the last chapter ended pretty much where the first chapter of the sixth book ended. <laughs> I should also point out that Books 5 and 6 were two-parter. Yep, they were two-parter. And because they were two-part, book six continued the numbering of the chapters from the previous book. Yep. Now, in the case of these particular episodes, the first four, like I said, that for first five adapts the book four of the series, which uses the debut of the Lizard Men, which they referenced in the previous season, and you get a chance to see them. Mostly, there's about a few characters you get a good amount of development this whole arc. I mean, the only ones who actually get development, who actually get a chance to do anything this whole arc, you have technically was kind of the main character of this entire arc, who actually made his debut in the second abri uh, retelling of the, the, the second abridged film, which is his name is Zarusu Seroshia, just by Josh Grell, no voicing Armin from. Attack on Titan, and a few other characters. He also is the current voice actor who voices Issei from Attack on from um High School DxD. And my opinion about this character, and people who agree with me when I show this guy off, he's the breakout character. So he's probably the best character of this entire story. We also have his awesome brother, who is voiced by David Wade. His name is who is actually chief of his village. His name is. Shishisa. We also can introduce to his this guy's also his love interest, Crush Lulu, who is now Bino, who is now Bino li li Lizard Woman, and he proposes to her as soon as he sees her because, yeah, she basically he falls in love instantly right on sight. Yep. Now the story for this particular arc is this: Anzo Gould, well the group. Or the 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 the, the Nazarek group wants to exterminate the, the lizard men, and so he wants to have them organized in just a period of eight days to basically mount a resistance. Didn't exactly want about a surprise attack. Just want to be a good. According to Ainz, this is going to be Nazarek's first all out war that they're participating in. Excuse me. And Korda is base, and he's kind of the commander of the, of the United forces for this particular fight. So Zadaru goes to at least three, at least two villages. He first goes to the Red Eye Village, which is one of the Crush Lulu. Yep, he's sent there because he's the most obvious choice to do it because he's not a chief, so he doesn't have he doesn't have basic responsibilities. And of course, when he he actually when he first showed first showed up in this episode, in the opening episode, he had just come back from a journey with his Hydra. Now it's not the same as a Hydra from Greek myth. It's type of Hydra, it's called a Hydra due to the fact it has five heads. And it's kind of like a mini Hydra. Though I've heard many stories about the actual Hydra from Greek myth. Where it's huge, the size of a freaking mountain. And, and the fact that Hercules had to battle this thing in the Greek myth as part of his 12 labors. Of course, Hydra is also the name of the famous organization from Marvel Comics. And of course, in the Marvel Sam Smack, Smack universe, we would have with Hydra was in control of Shield for years. That was kind of the case in the comics as well, give or take. Yep. And this Hydra creature was actually also served as Zerus' transformation. First, he goes to to Red Eye, the Red Eye Village. It explained one thing I got praised with the show, and of course, they kept a lot. From what I can tell, they kept a lot from the light novel this time. Unlike what it was the previous season, the kind of cut us some stuff. This season, they stuck really close to the source material. Like, oh my gosh, it was so freaking close. As far as I can tell, I don't think they kept out anything. I mean, they kept mostly almost everything in from these light novels. I can't honestly think of anything that they actually kept out from what I can tell anyways, because 
they probably spent t- it's they probably spent the past three years just the writers of the show. The, the my guess is that either that it probably kind of the same thing happened with High School DxD where the creator of these characters was not happy with the season that well, so he told him to make sure he read the light novels and make sure it stays close to the source material, making minor changes here and there. There was some. It wasn't much for changes for season one, more like stuff was cut out. Yeah. Some scenes I thought was really hilarious, like a bit of basically throwing a fit because I need to share a room with, 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 with one of the not, not like battle maids. <laughs> yeah, that would have been hilarious in animation, but nope, we never got a chance to see that. And my guess is the writer must, must have been upset about all the cuts that are made for the, for the adaptation. So you probably tell him, don't cut much of anything. It's mostly a lot of it's pretty much the same with a minor change of dialogue here and there. Also book four is the introduction to the character of Victim. And this change I do appreciate for the dub because I found this to be annoying in the light novels because the season didn't introduce him. The change I mean is that in the light novels Victim speaks backwards. I found this to be annoying and thank God the dub actually managed to fix this nonsense. Kind of thinking of a Curtis, where in the light novels, he had to pause after every single word, which I found to be annoying, and I'm glad the dub actually bothered to fix that. As far as I can tell for the sub, they did fix that too. They probably felt they probably felt this though that this was annoying, and they thought and they probably did feel as though this was a necessary change because they probably found the whole pausing after every single word the guy says. Yeah, it's probably very much really annoying. I don't know if the creator has a problem with that particular change. I don't know. I haven't heard anybody who has a problem with the way that Victim and Cardo speaks in the light novels. Me, I found the, the way they spoke to be kind of annoying. Oh yeah, Victim, when you see him, he's basically kind of like this floating like little creature with that halo over his head. And he apparently doesn't have a neck, so he has to churn in order people to, to look at people. Yeah, it's a particularly odd creature. Mm-hmm. Also, book four was an introduction to a guy, Gigantic, who was actually one of the Floor Guardians, who was not introduced in the previous season. Now, I think this creature is the Guardian of Floor 6, and Victim is the Guardian of Floor 8. Mm-hmm. Yep. As for why these characters were introduced, my personal theory, the reason why these characters weren't introduced yet, is because they were probably more created yet. That's probably the reason why. Yep. So, of course, it's also referencing stuff that happened in the previous arc, which is the whole thing of Shelter being possessed. That becomes a factor in... That becomes that is actually referenced in, book, in, the, in the, the stuff that it does in Book 4 and in Book 6, what happens in Book 3. Mm-hmm. Because the first time she Shelter this season, she goes to the bar to start drinking. Yes, because she needs to be punished. Though they punish her in the most hilarious way, Probably the most inappropriate way possible. I'll get to that in a minute. As in the case of Lizardmen, now the chief of one of the, which is the, the the Great Dragon Tusk tribe, which, look at these creatures. These don't look like freaking lizards. They look like freaking alligators. And they're huge. And their chief is voiced by the guy who voices Mr. Satan from Dragon Ball Z. Yes, he is seriously voiced by him. How? I can tell by his dub actor. I can tell by just by listening to the guy's voice. Uh-huh. Yep. So, in the case of... And when Crush Lou goes up the trap because she's a bino, and of course the sun's very hard on her skin, she just wears like this planting and sort of camouflage, and that's how she travels. And the, and the chief of the great uh, the green uh, dragon tusk tribe, he goes with them because he feels like it. It was after... We also get a chance to see... Tarshu's his sword that he uses is really cool looking sword. It's a small like little like almost it almost looks like a giant claw, almost like a claw sweep thing, but it's a badass sword with the cool abilities too. It's basically like a freezing sword. And I appreciate the fact that they actually managed to keep this in. Cause I'm sure that I'm not sure if the animators did not want to include this thing, but they probably didn't include it because it's involved in a lot of book four, so yeah, and the fact that this guy is frequently seen carrying this thing on his waist. So, yeah, it's perfectly necessary to keep this thing in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they get back to the village. They see two more chieftains. Excuse me. Yeah, the, the other two chiefs, 
they're introduced and they don't do much of anything aside from them getting killed by Crotus at the end of the thing. Yeah, one of them gets killed by being sliced in half from his head down to his groin. Yeah, luckily enough, it's not doing his freaking hands like Century did with Ares in Marvel Comics. Man, I thought this. I still think that was a over-the-top death that was completely unnecessary to this very day. Even though it's been nine years since that story came out, and yet when I when I saw this, I'm like, okay, did the writer of this thing probably knew about the event siege and probably decided to copy that instead of having with bare hands that with a slice. I have never seen this particularly in anime where a character gets sliced in half the way this guy does. I've seen beheadings in anime, stabbings, chopping up limbs, but never will go from like, shh, like the, I have never seen an anime. So maybe the writer took inspiration, loose inspiration from Siege for this particular moment, and that's probably why I think it comes to that. But before their final battle with Crotus, yeah, and I decides now Albedo basically suggests to punish Sheltair. And she's like, okay, we'll get you punishment later. And this is in the same time after Kronos and his forces did a big all-out battle, which is awesome in the anime. And they kept pretty much a lot of it in. Heck, the guy basically get the, the this necromancer gets defeated by being stabbed in the freaking eye with his sword. The guy gets killed that way. And of course, according to Hines, aside from losing that guy, you didn't do that too bad. Despite the fact losing a bunch of dead zombies. <laughs> so yeah, your punishment is to take on these things by yourself without any backup. And then of course, they decided, I decided to make a statement by bringing up this gigantic... First, he has this giant river... This had his river frozen. And they throw this cube, rolled by Giganta. Lands Middle Lake had these undead soldiers in armor form this steps. Because they apparently don't want to touch the mud for some reason. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. And so, Z Zernula's brother goes out to me and goes, Why not? Only one chief. Don't have to have all five out there. Which is a good move. His brother bring out was actually a really good idea because why the heck not? Give or take. And of course, I love the bit at the beginning when they first show these two, and they have a good band. So I love the chemistry between David Wade and Josh Grail. It's like these two guys are basically very good, uh, have very good chemistry off of each other. And Josh Grail, it's like it's like when he, when he talks with Crush Lulu. He, like, he first me, he also acts like a schoolboy. He's, like, so nervous around, like, from his perspective, a beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, and, of course, tell him, like, you have four hours. Like, this is, of course, after the battle. You have four hours to prepare for an all-out battle with Kronos. So, they go and prepare. So, and I, I found this awkward both in the, in, the, in, the, in the manga and the light novel. This chapter ends with Crush Lulu telling Zatru... Tells she tells him to impregnate her. Yeah, and then we of course cut to Ein's like so, okay, Shalti like he sees the, the special chair that apparently that that de 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 Demimir must prepare for him. He didn't like it, so he told Shaltier, get your hands and knees, I'm gonna sit on you. As your punishment. And apparently she loves him to be sit on this by the fact the guy weighs like like a freaking brick. And she's into it. She basically loves it like and he tells like how kinky their creator make her like this? <laughs> yeah, how kinky these make this woman? Yeah. And of course, he said, what well, the Chiefs are up to, he's like, okay, where's the uh, white lizard and etc. So he takes it out of school, look inside one of the things, and then they see the most awkward thing. Yeah, even the light, even the manga, I thought, I, both in the light novel and in the manga, I found this scene to be awkward. We see Zestro and Crush Lou having sex. I am not kidding about this. They actually kept this in the end, which I agree with on. This is a thing, un thing. It's like, and of course, Zimmer is like, well, there's, there, it's, it's last hours before the battle. Why not do this? And of course, Ainz is like, okay, yeah, the two dark elves. It's like, are they going to ask where babies come from? Though, they will be brought my ass to, my, give the clinical answer to that. Yeah, even though these two are actually 70 years old, they should look, look like look like they're little kids. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, and they eventually come to the battle itself, and Kratos Kr Kr basically is uh, is a badass in this battle. Basically, he kills two of them, two of the five chiefs, like, really easy. There was only four chiefs plus one, one extra warrior. 
he managed to plow these guys, and in the case of the, uh, the green chest to a tribe, he gets wounded, but he gets healed. So the chief of the green claw tribe, he gets killed, and, and Zara gets killed, and later on, Crush Lou is brought before him, and just like, look, I want to inspire people, and I want, I want to bring back your beloved. And he does. He, he probably does suspect she might be pregnant with the guy's child, so he's probably thinking, okay, it's not good to leave this child, get out of this child, not have his father around, so he resurrects him. Though I thought this was kind of weird for Josh Grodd to do. He gave sort of touch through it. It's kind of like an old man voice that he would resurrect. I thought this was weird. I don't know if this was a change in voice actor for this one last bit, but as far as I could tell, Josh Grodd was probably still credited for all these episodes. Mm -hmm. And then we cut to Cerberus, and... He is a freaking badass of the last many episodes of the season. He rescues a woman, and mostly a lot of his stuff that he does in these episodes, it remains pretty much unchanged. He rescues a woman who apparently had been beaten and assaulted. Like, wow, this woman has been severely bruised and had disease exposed to her. So he brings her home, has Solution, the slime woman, perform, like, like, do a physical damage of her and heal her. Eventually, she's healed up and she's perfectly fine. Though her name, of course, is later revealed by Ans in the next part that she is history of the woman killed back in the second arc of the previous season and the core of the second light novel. Mm hmm. Yep. And, of course, the events of the final episode that adapts the last few last couple of chapters of book five that actually does affect the very next episode. Yes, of course, this is also we get to see. Princess Rainier, Klein, which I think is a really good character. I even like the fact they brought back the, the warrior chief of these episodes. He is actually a really good character. I really enjoy this guy. This guy is a freaking badass. He trains with Klein and has a good battle with him too. And then we get also introduced in these episodes to Klein Clickerbeard's character. And let's see, what is her name here? I had to look her up here. Because she's a huge woman, part of the Blue Knights. Let's see if I can find her here. I know she's part of the Blue Knights. Though they also can choose to Evil Eye. Lot Lacris. Okay. Gagorion. Yeah, a woman is also known as like a no breast woman, and she's commonly taken for a man. She's freaking huge. And when I heard and I know Colin Clickett Beards, I know her voice. And when I heard her voice, I was like, What the heck is this? Really? You sound like an old lady. Seriously, it sounds so bizarre. Like, what happened to the stuff basically she's known for doing basically kind of basically a uh, badass woman? Of course, she is a badass, this thing. Yep. Evil Eye is apparently a woman who apparently is a few hundred years old, apparently, and she also a to mom and aka Ions. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I kind of wish they would include a scene where Mama meets the leader of the Blue Knights. I kind of wish they would include that, but they didn't. And it's kind of weird that the evil eye don't reveal her real name. Oh, uh, they're not in this thing. Yeah. Okay, Blue Rose. Blue Rose Knights, okay. Yeah, so a couple... Gregory gets killed by... The insect maid, which you finally get a chance to do something this season. You see her basically eating a, uh, I don't know, like it's a butler or something. We see one of the members of the Eight Fingers. And apparently Demoor's plan was to not destroy the Eight Fingers organization. So I think Rainier really wanted to destroy it. He takes it over and gets rid of all the illegal stuff. Oh yeah, and the female member of the group, she becomes easily submissive. After apparently being tortured by being, being eat, partially eaten inside. And of course she got healed up. Of course, why waste the smoking hot woman? Yeah. It's almost like that the whole... De and, of course, we have this sort of makeshift battle with that Demar organizes to build up Mama's reputation, which is really nice. They have, this happened throughout the last couple episodes of this particular arc. And of course, book six, we have also Tastro, I think her name is. Yeah, the woman who Cyrus is saved. And 
she becomes like a maid and she kind of it's hinted at at the start of she basically kind of falls in love with him and then of course by the end of the book she becomes a maid for the Nazarick. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think there was anything else. I like Demi Org's base it, I like the fact that the battle between Demimir and Mormon are it's a really awesome it's a really cool looking battle both times they're battle even though it's a even though it's basically um a makeshift battle, a mock battle, and I even like the fact that Nabe takes three of the battle maidens, three ba three of the battle maids, off the side to supposedly battle them, and she's impressed with Evil Eye's ability to keep up with them. Excuse me. Also, Brain he pops up in this particular episode, and Cerberus to meet up with Klein, which I thought this was really cool. The fact you have someone Nazarik teaming up with someone from the Ra the Ray's Kingdom. To first, like, take down this this brothel. And even though, yes, he kind of did draw a transition himself, but even though he's not supposed to. But, yeah. Of course, helps out the group later. Takes out the illusionist. And, yeah, it was... A, and, of course, the members of this Six Arms organization. Yeah, these members are... These supposed warriors are taken care of pretty easily. By having servers punch their heads off like they were nothing. Yeah, it was a quick little. It was a quick little thing. He gets their leader. It's a pretty interesting little battle he has with Brain, and of course he gets defeated by Silver, just simply kicking him in the head with his arms behind his back. It was a pretty disappointing battle. I like his battle with Brain better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the whole thing with the Iron Arm Monk. Yeah, he says, "Oh, that's probably not talk for the lead. Your arms are really are made of iron." Mm -hmm. And of course, he gets a chance to have a rematch with Shaltier, who gets a chance to chop off her fingernail. Yep. <laughs> and apparently she doesn't remember battling him, despite the fact he remembers her very well. And it's a good thing she's wearing a mask, though apparently she... And I, I know she's wearing different clothing, but did she change her hair color too? Because I could have sworn she's a platinum blonde, and yet here she's a basically a regular blonde, which I thought was really weird. Uh, yeah. This season overall was really, really good. Oh, I almost forgot to mention Princess Rainier. She apparently has an evil side to her. She also is built to change her, change her smile. And then she goes after a particular... She asks a particular maid to prepare her a bath. And she decides to... And you hear in her thoughts. She's going to kill this woman for insulting her bodyguard. That's how insane this woman is. Yeah. And apparently, one of the nobles actually knew about her evil side. And he sees, like, oh my gosh, she's like almost a complete different person. Yeah. No, she puts on the Insta Girl act for. To, for. For Climb. Like, when I heard this guy's name, like, Climb. That's kind of a dumb name you give a particular guy. I mean, did the writer himself run out of names for characters? So he decides to name the character Climb? You also see Renio's father. Yeah. Who puts on a freaking... Even though he doesn't do anything, but... Even he agrees this whole crisis is well worth the military's time. And money to... To free the people. Mm hmm Yep. Overall, one fantastic season. Looking forward to season three. But I have to wait until I finish up... Uh, the light novel... Uh, I finish reading books seven through nine. But... I do have two other videos I'm planning to do today. One is a review of the newest episode of Black Clover. I did check. There was not a new chapter released in manga this week. And, of course, I'll review the shorts that this season had and the and two OVAs. And there was two more OVAs, even though these, these two OVAs were released before the season. I'll review this particular thing anyways. But until I see the next reviews, bye.